I am just about to go on my fourth whiskey of tonight. I started out with the Patty Irish whiskey bottle at 40%. I moved on to the Glen Livet 18, which was bottled at 43%. I followed that up with a Kilcarran 12, 46%. And now I'm going to do the last one that I'm going to record. I might have another dram or two after this, depending on how awake or sleepy I feel. This is the Kilcoman Loch Gorm. It is a uh, sherry, uh, sherry cask matured Iowa peated whiskey, which I usually like this kind of thing. 700 mils, 46% alcohol by volume. There's a bunch of writing on the back. Uh, it's a curious thing that I was able to get the Kilcoman Saneg at one particular store. And I was able to get the Kilcoman Mahir Bay at another store. I was able to get the Kilcoman Loch Gorm at yet another store. I was able to get the 100% Isla at yet another store. I was able to get the Cask Strength Edition at yet another store. So I ended up going all over different places, only to find a month or two ago when I went into a particular store to pick up some Glenallachie 12 that they had all the expressions of Kilcoman right there. I should have gone there in the first place. I should know better. That store, unfortunately, is a little out of my way. But when I take a fare down in that direction and I drop off near that store, I generally stop in and see what's going on. Naturally, if, if, if it's earlier than 11 p.m. And I've, I've got some interesting finds down at that place. Uh, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> well, this is the Kilhoman Loch Gorm. I've heard a lot about this one. I've heard, seen people making videos about it and talking about it and reviewing it. And so, of course, I have to do the same. <laughs> Am I a copycat? I hope not. I, I try to put my own spin on these things. And I like to think that maybe I spend a little more time with it than other people do. Oh, that was a gentle one. Well, here we go, Loch Gorm. That's about right. Mm, okay. Cork smells nice. It's a nice cork too. And there's the bottle. You kill home and lock gorm. What does it say on the box? Kill home and Isla's Farm Distillery, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Distillers something, whoa, distilled in 2007, bottled in 2013, so it's six years old, non chill filtered, natural color, we like to see that, yes. There's a little Isla map of Scotland. So a map of Scotland, there's an Isla right there. Oh, fine print. Kilcoman Distillery was founded in 2005. It is the first distillery to be built on Isla for over 120 years. It is a farm distillery and a proportion of the barley used in production is grown and malted at the distillery. 
Loch Gorm is situated just north of the distillery and has some of the most heavily peated water on Isla. Similar to the dark rich color of our sherry cask matured single malts. All future sherry matured releases will be named Loch Gorm. This release has been matured for over five years in Oloroso sherry butts and finished in Oloroso sherry hogsheads for two months. Color, nose, palette, finish, etc. John McLellan, distillery manager. Distilled matured bottled by Kilhoman, Isle of Isla. Yeah. Nice. Does it say anything different on the bottle? Color nose palette finish. Ignore, ignore, ignore. 46% alcohol by volume. Isla single malt scotch whiskey. And it's got a couple signatures on the front. Almost six years old. Okay, very nice. Ah. I'm going to put some of that in my Isla Infinity bottle. No doubt. In fact, I have... Oh, that's a nice... I got a little bit on my hand. Oh, I like it already. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful nose already. I was a little bit enthusiastic. I got some of it up my nose. It burns a little bit, but does that ever clean out the sinuses? Okay. I'm getting fruits, sherry, ripe fruits like grapes and raisins and plums and prunes and Not so much figs and dates, more raisins and plums. Fruits, ripe fruits, but not necessarily dark, uh, dried fruits. It still has a, a ripe, but not dried kind of feel to it. And of course there's some of that peat, that peat smoke just hiding underneath it. But it's there, you dig a little bit. You dig a little bit and there it is. This is nice. It's a uh, Bonfire, half bonfire and half medicinal kind of peat, but it's mixed in with that sherry cask influence that, I'd say bonfire, yeah. There's a little bit of a mineral thing to it as well. Oh, my arm is tired. Oh. I injured my my shoulder, my arm a little bit when I was changing a, a flat tire on a taxi and I was in a rush. Oh, I'm liking this nose. There's the sherry cask influence on top, ripe fruits, dark fruits, but not dried fresh ripe fruits and then there's an, the peat underlays the whole thing the peat smoke and yeah you know if I peel the top layer of that fruitiness off it's bonfire smoke
wait, before I taste it, I'm going to see what it costs. Kilhoman Sherry Cask. That would be Loch Gorm. $130.34. $0.10 bottle deposit. Subtotal two oh six ten. Oh, but there's also a Glen Scotia in there. Sorry. The GST would be about um, six dollars and fifty cents, and it would be about thirteen dollars for the liquor tax. So thirteen. Six dollars and fifty cents. Ah, almost twenty dollars for taxes. So twenty dollars on top of one thirty. It's one hundred fifty bucks. One hundred fifty dollars out the door. Canadian dollars. That is, they're smaller. Yeah, it's beautiful nose. I can already tell it's very well balanced between the sherry casks and the sherry butts and the smoke, the peat smoke from Kilhoman. Hmm. Oh. What a sensation. Slippery alkaline mouthfeel. Nice balance between the wood and the peat smoke and the fruity notes. Plums, raisins, grapes. And the wood, the wood gives out some tannins, a little bit of slight bitterness. The it, sherry butts and sherry casks, right? Yeah, but it's not too bitter, and there aren't too many tannins because this is only five years and a bit old. So it hasn't had a, it hasn't had a chance to get completely bitter and disgusting. I don't like it when there's too much bitterness. From the tannins. Interestingly enough, I'm now getting some pencil shavings on the nose which I was not getting earlier. This is well balanced. It's got a lot of sherry cask influence without being a sherry bomb. It's got the bonfire smoke to balance that. And then from a third side, you're getting some tannins from the oak, some tannins from the wood of the European oak, the sherry butts and the sherry casks in which the whiskey was aged. It's a beautiful balance. It's balanced right down the middle. Three ways. Sherry, 
smoking oak. I am liking this expression of Kilhoman a lot. It has more than most of the others that I have tried. It's a nice way to finish or almost finish a flight. I believe that after finishing this particular dram, which I am enjoying to the hilt, I might go for a Port Charlotte 12. See how that bottle's been coming along. I was a little bit disappointed with that one, maybe because I was having high expectations for it. But I'm just about to conclude my evening of making recordings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is delicious, delicious stuff. I'm becoming a bigger fan of Kilhoman as I go along, especially when they use different casks like this. And the smoke is not overpowering, it's, it's somewhat gentle. but it's balanced. It's a three-way balance. I, I, I've said that before. Smoke, oak, and sherry maturation. Slanchava. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>